morning and thank God. Thank God today is here. Why? Because we're going to do nothing but work on derivatives. We're not going to work on why are we here and what came first, the chicken or the egg. We're not working on those. We're going to work on nothing but derivatives. So let's go to the first, the two homework questions I got. And it looks like somebody has sent some more. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, well, I'm trying to find the first two. I think this is the first one that I worked. Let's go with 3.429 slash 14. Is this a test question? Let me look and see. Oh yeah, this is a test question. And the reason I would put this on a test is because it has a negative one right there. And what would y'all do? When y'all see that negative one, what do y'all do? Quit. So that's why I would put it on a test. Can somebody tell me what they should do here? Come on, tell me what to do. Move it to the bottom. Uh, would you? Good job. Rewrite. Just put rewrite. Go ahead and write it down, and I want you to rewrite it, and you're going to use the quotient rule because you don't know the chain rule yet. You could use the chain rule with this, but you don't know it yet. So y is equal to 2t minus 1 over 3t minus 6. Now, when we get to when we get to the uh, chain rule, I'll show you how to do this problem with the chain rule. But right now, you don't know the chain rule, so you can't use it. So Let's go over the rules that we've learned so far. And that is the power rule. A to the N is equal to N times A, N minus one. That's the power rule. The Product rule first times the derivative of the second plus the second. Oh, that's the denominator, sorry. Times the second times plus the second times the derivative of the first. And all of my black pens are running out because I haven't opened my new box yet, so. And just to rewrite that, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. That's what that says. And then the quotient rule. These are the only three rules that you know right now. Denominator times numerator prime minus the numerator times the denominator prime over denominator squared. Now these are the three derivative laws that you know so far. After today, you're going to know four chain rule is going to be next. And we're talking about 70% of your test. 70% of these three and the chain rule. So that's why I was wanting to hurry up and get to this. And the Wimbledon and what was their addresses, we, we can do those later. All right. 
So here we go. Y prime is equal to denominator times numerator prime. Let me find a different color that I haven't used that maybe has a sharp point on it. Let me use one of these generic pens I bought from Amazon for like a dollar for 500 of them. Try this. Numerator prime. Minus. Y'all have to excuse me. I got to take these out of the box and find a red one. Because my red ones are shot too. Good gosh, I didn't know I had 5,000 of these pins. Throw this box away. Minus, and wouldn't you know it, I ordered all these pins and not a single red pin in there. Sucks. Minus, that's a pink minus. And that's going to be the numerator times the denominator prime. We're going to use that orange again. 3t minus 6 prime. Now notice I put those primes up there because I'm going to take the derivatives. I'm going to take the derivatives of those, and I know that's scrunched up, but that says 3t minus 6 right there. Trying to use some different colors. All over 3t minus 6 quantity squared. Now, do we really care about the denominator? Yes or no? Not really. You really don't care about the denominator. You can leave that as 3t minus 6 squared. That's probably going to suffice. You don't need to stress out about the denominator after this point. If something cancels, that's fine, but just leave that. You want to focus. You want to focus on the numerator. So I'm going to take the I'm going to take the the derivative of that right there. So 3t minus 6 y prime is equal to 3t minus 6. What is the derivative of 2t minus 1? 2. And I'm going to put a 2 in green, meaning I took the derivative of that 2t minus 1. Minus in red, or in this case, magenta. These Amazon markers are a little bit off color. So, minus and black, 2t minus 1. And what is the derivative of 3t minus 6? 3. Good job. All over 3t minus 6 squared. And now you're ready to do algebra. You've done the calculus. Calculus is done. So now you're ready to do the algebra. So go ahead and take a minute and finish this numerator up with algebra. I'm going to let y'all do that. I'm going to draw a little bit of lines here. Now you can put this three I'm going to take that three and I'm going to mark it out. And I'm going to put it right here with this negative. So you can kill two birds with one stone. 
distribute that negative three with these two, and you're distributing the negative three, I mean the three and the negative. So I took that green three and I put it right here. You don't have to do that, but you just have to do two more steps. So Y prime, I do not like these markers. The tops don't stay off. Um, so 6T minus, eight, minus 12 minus 6T plus 3 all over three T minus six quantity squared. And you can absolutely not tell the difference between the black and the purple, can you? I can't. Can y'all tell the difference? No. Not so, really, no. no. Okay. So I know I can use purple for black. All right, let me take my red pen out. And six T cancels there and negative 12 plus 3 ain't that equal to like negative 9 yes sir can we go further yes or no Come on, um, algebra people. I mean, if you foil it, yes. Foil the denominator. Uh, shortcut number two. Yes, or shortcut number two. The reason I would not say F-O-I-L is because it takes too long. So I'm going to use shortcut number two. That's going to give me negative nine over nine T squared minus 16 times 2 is what? 18 times 2 is 36x plus 36. All right, finish it. You got a couple of more steps. Finish it. Looks like you can factor out something on that bottom. Or you could just quit. Throw your pencil down real hard. Throw it down and make it pop. That's what I used to do. Can, um, can you factor out a 9 and then make it 1 and then t minus 4x plus 1? Oh my gosh. Communication. Wow. Yes. These people are going to get mad at you, Miss Rodriguez. You're not supposed to do that. Negative 9 over negative 9. That would be a t or positive 9. And that'd be T squared minus four. What is this X or T? Good gracious, T plus four. And the nines cancel. And you're left with negative one over T squared minus four T plus four. And that is a, now I did put in about three or four extra steps, like the little lines right here. And I put in the negative brackets right there. And you didn't have to do this. You could have done this and went from here to here. Um, so you could skip some of these steps. I'm gonna leave that up. And that is a good test question right there. So let's do a nerd. And let's, I'm just going to type in three. That's how they show y'all how to do. There, there you go. That's, there's the quotient rule right there. Lobotomize the student. 
That's what that says right there. Lobotomize the student. And did we get that? No, they just, they didn't go as far as I did. So you could stop right here. You could stop right there. So you need to make a note. Will I take either answer? Oh yeah, I'll take either of those answers. Okay. All right, let's do a nerd. In fact, in the previous class, we did one like this one and we typed this in and it was right. So I think you can type either answer in. Has anybody tried to do that one at home and took it, taken, took it? Did you took it? Taking it down to this right here? Uh, yes, sir. I tried that. It works the same. Okay. All right. Next question. This is 3.453 slash 20. 3.4. I got so many dadgum pins now. I don't know how to act. We'll try brown. Like black, you won't be able to tell the difference. 3.4. 53 slash 20. Let's see what it says. First of all, is it a test question? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I quit on this one. I wouldn't even try. It's too complicated. G of X is equal to 6X minus 7 over 5x plus 1. And then I'm going to take my handy dandy green marker. Well, I don't like that green because it's a little bit too dark. Let me try this green. Plus x cubed. That ain't green. That's freaking turquoise color. That ain't, that's not that color up there. Doesn't that look more blue? Dang old Amazon. Dang old 15, 50, 50 pins for like a dollar. Well, not the same color. All right. Now, why did I color this one? Nick? Why did I color X cube a different color? Because it's a different what? It's a different term. You can go ahead and take the derivative of that if you want to, because this is plus. Does it, you don't have to use first the product rule. This is just take take the derivative of this term and take the derivative of that term. Well, the derivative of this term, you got to use quotient rule. Derivative of that term, well, that's 3x squared. You can go ahead and do that now. In fact, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to draw a big. And I'm just going to put 3x squared right there. Because it's by itself. Now I'm going to do this right here. So first, our denominator, g prime of x is equal to denominator times numerator prime. I don't need to use that color. Let's use this magenta, which probably come out look, looking like violet. Um, 6x minus 7 prime minus numerator. times denominator prime over denominator squared. All right, we're not worried about the denominator. We're worried about the numerator. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of these two pink ones. And I'm going to use my brown. 
and I'll use something opposite of pink. Um, let's go with a green. Let's go with this light green right here. So G prime of X is equal to five. One. What is the derivative of six X minus seven? Six, Hubert. See, Miss Rodriguez, they've already they've already converted you. See, all they did was give you some mean looks, and Given now you're not talking to speak. Okay. Plus or minus. Well, have you given some of these people a chance to speak? I hope you're not putting money on it. Because they suck. 6x minus 7. And what is the derivative of 5x plus 1? 5. 5. And now y'all do the algebra. We'll let y'all do the algebra. So G prime of X. Well, that's six. It's going to be 30x plus 6. Negative 30x. Negative 5 times negative 7 is positive 35, isn't it? Yes. And all that over 5x plus 1 quantity squared. And the 30x is cancel. And you're left with g prime of x is equal to 41 over 5 plus 1 squared plus. 33x squared. Now again, notice that that x cubed, I took the derivative of that before the before it even started and just brought it down here because it's its own, it's by itself. You put a positive or a negative right between these two, you got separate terms. So, there you go. Forty one over five X plus one quantity squared plus three X squared. And you feel good about yourself. Next. Three point four sixty three twenty two. Three point four sixty three slash twenty two. Is this a test question? Oh, hell, there's one. We already did that one, didn't we? God, I hate these questions. Find an equation uh, of the tangent know. line to the given curve at X is equal to A. Use a, graphing use a graphing utility to graph the curve and the tangent line on the same set of axes. Well, first of all, you need to write it in the correct order because that's not written correctly. So y is equal to 9x e to the x 
9xe to the x plus 1x equals 8, or plus 8. And I'm not going to worry about that other stuff right now. Okay, so you've got to take the derivative of this guy. This is not as bad as I thought. I just thought it was one of those which came first, the chicken or the egg theory questions. This is multiplication. So I want you to take your handy dandy pink highlighter or pink pen, and I want you to put a. So you got to do the product rule here. Of course, we haven't taught you how to do e to the x yet, but we'll do that because the homework is so screwed up. And let's take our green highlighter and let's. That's a separate. That's a separate. And this is a separate. So you got three terms here. You got to do the product rule here. Do the power rule here and do the power rule here. And that's X to the zero. So and that's X to the first. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to set up the I'm going to set up the product rule. So first, first times the derivative of the second. Plus the second. Times the derivative of the first. All right, that's the product rule. So it gets a bracket around it to go with that first set of brackets. Plus, somebody tell me what the derivative of 1x is. Would that be 1? One? 1. 1. And somebody tell me what the derivative of 8x to the 0 or the constant 8. What is the derivative of 8? Zero. 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 Now, you don't know what the derivative of e to the x is because we haven't covered it yet, but this book is stupid, so I'm going to tell you. If f of x is equal to e to the x, f prime of x is equal to e to the x. They shouldn't show you this until after the chain rule. Because the chain rule changes everything with e to the x. So what they ought to do is keep these out of your homework problems until after the chain rule. But oh, hell no, they, they don't. And they wonder why students get confused. All right, so anyway, that is the derivative. So if you screw that up, there ain't no hope, okay? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. If you miss this on a test, you don't what? You don't tell anybody. All right, so here we go. We're going to do the, so 9x. What is the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. e to the x. Plus, e to the x, and what is the derivative of 9x? 9. Plus 1. All right, so now you just got to finish it. So 9x e to the x plus 9 e to the x plus one. I'm going to factor out a, a, nine X, a 9 e to the x right here. So 9 e to the x, and that's going to leave x plus one plus one. And you could add those two, but I'm going to leave it like that because of those 
bracket. So I'm going to leave it like that. And that is the equation. And then you're going to plug in zero. And I'm not going to go through that. I'm going to just give you the equation here. Now they might have added those two ones. What in the world? Okay, they went ahead, factor out 9e to the x. There's their equation right there. And then plug in 0 and you get 10. They kind of did both of them right there. And then do the equation. Y'all know how to do that. We've been doing that since the review section. Point slope equation. Plug that 0 in at the beginning of the equation and get you a X and Y, and then plug it in. I'm not too concerned with that. I mean, y'all can do that. Oh, find the equation. Oh, okay. So let, let me go ahead and show you what they did. Okay, right here. This is the equation for the slope. Y prime is equal, that's the equation for the slope. You gotta have a point first, and they give you A is equal to what? Zero. So let's, that's X is equal to zero. So plug zero in. What's E to the zero? What's anything raised to the zero power? One. One. Plus zero. That's zero. That zeroes out right here. Zero times one. That kind of goes out. And eight. So, what is nine times one? Or I'm sorry. What is nine times zero? Zero. And zero times e to the one. That's that. That's zero times one. So you're left with eight. So there's your point. Now, find your slope. Y prime is equal to the slope. So nine times E to the zero. Zero plus one plus one. So what is nine times one? Nine, nine. Zero plus one is what? One. And what's nine plus one? Ten. So the slope is equal to ten. Now what? Point slope equation. Okay. Y minus eight. And we've been doing this since the review. 10 times X minus zero, 10X plus eight. Y is equal to 10X plus eight. What they tried to do is they baited you. They put an E to the X in the question, knowing that you don't know what the derivative of E to the X is. So what naturally would you do? not do it. I don't agree with the positioning of this question. This question, e to the x should be brought to your attention after the chain rule. And you'll find out why today when I show you. All right, let's move on. I need to get I need to get done by three o'clock so I can do the chain rule. All right, so that's that one. Delete 3.4. Two people have sent this one or it was sent twice. 3, 4, 71, 24. 3.4, 71 slash 24. I'm going to get another. These Amazons go through the, they have a lot of 3.4, 71 slash 24. 
Oops, sorry. At the end of the semester, when y'all bring me a bottle of tequila, bring me some more markers, more Sharpie markers, okay? All right. Oh my gosh, look at that. F prime, F double prime, and F triple prime. You know what that says? Students should quit. That's what that says. Okay, so you don't know what F prime is. That's the first derivative. What do you think F double prime is? The second derivative. The second derivative. And then F triple prime is the third derivative. Of course, you wouldn't know that. And again, they just assume that these students know that the first that we have, that we shouldn't be doing first, second, derivative, third derivative. We should wait and do that in a later section. But anyway, that's what it means. Now, you can do the algebra first, then do the calculus, or you can do the calculus first and then do the algebra. We're going to do both. So here I'm going to do the algebra first. Let me write it down. F of X is equal to 4X squared times negative 3X to the negative third plus 8. I don't recognize the way they write this. I've been teaching for 25 plus years and I have no idea where this comes from. I never have put a constant before term. That must be some of that new math they're teaching in y'all's junior high and high schools. Never seen that before. Till the last couple of years I've seen it in some of the books. Must be reform. Reformation. Dang old, I don't think it's right. All right, here we're going to do the algebra first. And then we're going to do the calc. So I'm going to distribute. Just like that. Four times negative three is what? Negative 12, Hubert. And x squared times x to the negative third is x to the what? Negative one, Hubert. What's four times eight? 32. X squared. And now you have the same thing as you started with, only it's more condensed. Now you can take the first second and third derivative of this right here. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to let y'all do it. It's not that difficult if you do it step by step. And don't try to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to let y'all do it because I believe in y'all. Y'all are winners. Uh, that's your first mistake. Yeah, y'all are winners and I'm, I'm proud of y'all. I know one thing. I'm about, I'm about ready. Uh, Dogecoin is about to drive me crazy. Went down again. I don't care what anybody says. There's something about this cryptocurrency that's got a lot of people scared. And they're trying to make it go down. And what they're trying to do is make it go down where everybody will sell out. And then they can buy it all up and make a lot of money off of it. So there must be something to it for all those people in New York and all these crazy places in China to buy up all the cryptocurrency. And there must be something to it. So that's why I'm holding on to it, just to piss them off. I'm chocolate, I'm not vanilla. 
I'm pepper. I'm not salt. I like to piss people off. Every once in a while, it makes me, makes you blood boil a little bit. And nobody says anything. Any chocolate out there? Anybody chocolate? Rebel? Go against the grain? Y'all suck. I'm not I'm sure not what you're talking about. Yeah, what are, what are you talking about? He's talking about like how I to the man. In real life, there's always a ginger and a Marianne, a chocolate and a vanilla, a rebel and a do-gooder. Which one are you? That's what chocolate and vanilla means. Pepper, salt, they're the opposite of each other. Oh, forget it. It's y'all's parents' fault. It's your parents' fault. You've never heard of being chocolate and vanilla. You never heard of that before. It's your parents' fault, Miss Rodriguez. Have you ever heard of being rebellious and not being rebellious? Yeah. Okay, it's the same thing. What are you, Hubert? I'm I'm he pepper. I'm chocolate ice cream with pepper on top. I try to piss people off. Ask my department head. She just got through fussing at me. Well, I didn't fill out enough paperwork for the end of the semester last semester. I don't do paperwork. I'm a teacher. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? F prime of X. Here we go. I'm going to write it out. Negative 1 times negative 12. X to the negative 1 minus 1. Plus... 2 times 32, x to the 2 minus 1. And I just wrote out the power rule for both of these terms. Power rule for 12x, power rule for 32x. And that's going to give us f prime of x is equal to 12x to the negative 2 plus 64x to the first. All right, now you do second derivative. I'm going to do it in another color. F double prime of X is equal to, go ahead and do the second derivative. So F double prime of X is equal to negative 24 X to the negative three plus 64 X to the zero. Now y'all all know X to the zero, that's the one. So that kind of disappears. And this is the first derivative, and that kind of disappears. And now do the third derivative. F triple prime of X is equal to negative three times negative 24 X to the negative three minus one. And what is 64? That's a constant. What's the derivative of a constant? Zero. Plus zero. And that's equal to, uh, I have no idea, 72. X to the negative fourth. What do you notice about the way I show y'all how to do these? Step by what? 
step. Step by step. And who should be using step by step? Well, if you do five homework problems and you get them all wrong, you need to be using step by step. Pretty simple. Miss Parker, you wait down there. Yes, Just making sir. sure. I hadn't I hadn't picked on you yet. I'm going to make my way around. Sacroy and Lee Croy's next. All right. And let's check and see what they got. And three. And their answer should be the same as mine. So see what they got. 64X. They got a common denominator right there, which that's fine. I don't, I'll take either answer. 64X plus 12X. Well, they got a common denominator here. 64 minus 24. And 72X. If this is OK, if you get one wrong, what? You get them all wrong. So if I got the second and third one right, then that means the first one's right. Does everybody understand that? OK, you don't get the first one wrong and get the second and third one right. Because they they play off of each other, so these are all correct. Good test question. I like that question. Now that I showed it to you, um, I can understand. Uh, yes. Would you still be able to um, take the derivative of that first one, like the first answer? Not the way it's written. You have to do some rewriting. You'd have to do the quad. You'd have to do the. Uh, the uh, quotient rule the way it's written. Okay. The first thing I would do is I would cancel. I would write it as I would can't. This is if you were to take the derivative of this. If this was a test question. F of X. Is equal to 64. X cubed plus 12. Over. X squared. The first thing you would do is rewrite. I would do 64 X cubed over X squared plus 12 over X squared. And then you would get 64 X plus 12 X to the negative two. And then you could do power rule. What about if you have a trinomial over a quantity squared? And you then you would try squared. to, you would do this right here with that, with that quantity squared. You would have three terms and you would try to rewrite them. Okay. And then you just uh, use the power rule, like you said? Power rule, yeah. Okay, thank now, you. Now, you could do this with the quotient rule also. You could do it with the quotient rule. Uh, for uh, denominator, x squared times numerator prime, which would be three times 64, which would be what? 192 X to the second power minus the numerator 64 cubed plus 12 times the denominator squared, I mean denominator prime, which is two X all over X to the four. And you could do it that way also. Remember derivatives you could do Several Priority different ways. In All right, let's move on to the next question. I'm running out of time. In fact, that takes care of these two. So I've got 3.3 .3 taken care of. So delete, delete, delete. Um, I'm going to hold off on these two. Let's see, what is this? Find derivatives, products, quotients. Let me see what this one looks like. OK, you no, know, I don't want to I don't want to do that one because that one's not a test question. I will we'll do that this one later. This is one never seen this before, so I got to figure it out. 
Let me see about this one. I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to waste time trying to figure out one of these questions in class. Um, yeah, let me, uh, let me look at those two because Mr. Michelle, it's the first time I've seen them. I have no idea where they come from. I bet you a dollar to a donut, they don't have a help me solve this. Yeah, they do. Usually the ones that I've never seen before are new and they don't have even have a help me solve this. That's why I said that. I think they are new to my labs and they're just throwing them up and they're not putting the help me solve this with them. Let me look at those and let me go to chain rule. I'll do those tomorrow for y'all, okay? Is that okay with you, Mr. Michelle? Yes, sir. Sounds good okay. to me. Oh, yeah, I just wanted, I want to cover the most important stuff. And that's why I wanted to wait on those. And plus, I've never seen those questions before. All right, so the chain rule. There's one thing you're going to notice about me showing you the chain rule. I don't show you the chain rule. Chain rule. What do you show us? The chain rule is nothing but the power rule plus the derivative of what's inside. Now, if any of you have had a calculus class before, you probably have heard that before, what's inside because that is a term that's used with the chain rule. What's inside? And what does that mean? That means what's inside the what? Parentheses. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. The best way to show you the chain rule is to show you the examples and not show you what the book shows you. Does everybody understand that? So here is an example. F of X is equal to four times two X minus three raised to the negative fourth power. Now, how do you know it's chain rule? Well, you got parentheses in here. Usually a good get a uh, tell all about a problem. If you've got parentheses in here, then chances are it's going to be the chain rule or you're going to use the chain rule. Mr. Parrish, you're making me dizzy. Okay. All right. So here's the power rule. I'm going to do the power rule in pink. I'm going to color the power rule in pink. And I'm going to do what's inside in yellow. So here we go. Pink. Well, this Amazon generic bargain pink. Here we go. So be negative four times four. 2x, sorry, 2x minus 3, negative 4 minus 1. All right, there's the power rule. Everybody see the power rule? I mean, that's what we've been doing. Now, I'm going to take the derivative of what's inside. Well, I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to write, since it's in yellow, I'm going to write in yellow 2x minus 3 in yellow, 2x minus 3, and I'm going to put a prime right there because i got to take the derivative of that. Okay, so the power rule, nothing changed, but whatever's in those parentheses you got to pull that out here and take the derivative. So that's going to be negative 16. Two X minus three. 
negative five times, what is the derivative of two X minus three? Two. Two. And the reason I use blue is because I took the derivative of this and that's what the derivative of that is. And that two can be multiplied by what? At 16. So your final answer is negative 32, 2x minus 3 to the negative fifth power. And I'm not going to worry about that negative exponent. You could write this three or four different ways. I'm not worried about that. This is the calculus. I just did the calculus right here. Uh, so when you wrote power rule plus the derivative of what's inside, should that like really be power rule times the derivative of what's inside? Ah, uh, yeah, you're you're right. Thank you. I'm sorry. You're gonna fail this class. Anybody else got a question? Oh uh, yeah, why isn't the parentheses inside um two instead of two x minus three? I don't understand like what your question is. Say it one more time. Like when you say take the derivative of what's inside, so we found the derivative. Um, why no. didn't you replace it with what's inside? Okay. Like your final answer. All right. I know what you're asking. Why didn't I replace this right here? The black. The black doesn't get replaced. Let me show you. Let's go to the original power rule. Four x to the third. 3 times 4 is what? 12 x 3 minus 1. Did I replace that x? Did I do anything to that x? No. So you leave that alone. That x is the same thing as this right here. You leave that alone. It just comes down. Just like this came down. That's part of the original term. Also invited along a bug buddy basically as a what player. What is that noise? Yeah. Siler, who is that talking? Sound like somebody preaching. It was my it was my roommate in the background. I forgot. Is, that is he my preaching? Is he practicing for a sermon? I think she's just on her phone. Oh, okay. Oh, one time. Yeah, they got we had uh I was I was doing a Zoom class, not a Zoom class, but Skype for business. And the the girl thought that she was muted and she wasn't. And she was on the phone, speaker phone with her boyfriend and they were going at it and they were cussing each other out. And I finally had to mute it. Because it got pretty raunchy there in about 10 seconds. It was really raunchy. I don't know if she accidentally turned it off mute or what, but all of a sudden there was this, this, and this, this, and USOB, and you this, and good gracious. All right, here we go. I'm going to give you uh, f of x is equal e to the negative 4x. Here is where I showed you, and I'm going to put pink. Okay, this is where you learn e to the x. Now, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, but this is not e to the x. What is this? This is e to the negative e to 4x. The negative this 4x. is a totally different animal. All right? So what do you do? Well, you go ahead and you rewrite it because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So you go ahead and rewrite this. So you write f of x or f prime of x is equal to e to the negative 4x. Do we have parentheses? Yes, we do. So we got to use chain rule. What's the derivative of negative 4x?
Negative four, Hubert. That's right. Negative class. four. And now the answer is f of prime of x is equal to negative four e to the negative four x. That's why they shouldn't show you e to the x until you get to the chain rule. The thing about the chain rule is if you see parentheses, STFD, slow down, okay? Slow down. Do the power rule. Now, in this case, we didn't do the power rule because it's e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So you rewrite it, but you've got parentheses. And if you've got parentheses, you got to take the derivative of what's inside. Let me give you another example. And don't worry, we're going to do at least 5,280 of these questions in the chain rule. So don't worry, because I know what y'all are going to suck at. And the chain rule is the one that y'all suck at. F of X is equal to the fifth root of X minus or 2X minus three to the third power. Now, what's the first thing you're going to do here? And I'm going to shut down here in a second. I know it's time. Rewrite it. Rewrite it. Good job. 315, I got like three minutes. So F of X is equal to 2X minus three exponent over index automatically when you rewrite that thing you're saying to yourself oh crap i've got parentheses so i got to use chain rule so chain rule says power rule so i got to take this out front so f prime of x is equal to three fifths and then I just bring down that 2x minus 3, because that's, that's part of the problem. And then I got to do 3 fifths minus 1. And then somebody tell me, I'll do, I'll do this in a different color. Let's do this in a green. 2x minus 3 prime. Okay, so that's going to give us 3 fifths times 2x minus 3. 3 fifths minus 5 fifths is equal to negative 2 fifths. And somebody tell me what the derivative of 2x minus 3 is. Two. 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 And that two goes where? Out front. And our final answer, or a form of the final answer. I'm not going to worry about you playing with the final answer. You can rewrite it several different ways. It would be six fifths, two X minus three to the negative two fifths. And I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm not, if you want to bring that radical back, if you want to put it below with the five, that, that, that's, that's irrelevant right now. F prime of X is equal to that. And you could put three dots right here. I want you all to understand, I don't really care about you rewriting it. That's up to you. I'm just trying to get you to learn the calculus because this is, this is algebra. This on is algebra. This right here, what we just did in the middle, this is calculus. So I'm I'm more I'm more concerned with you doing this part than these three dots down here to get what six over five uh what fifth root of two x minus three um and that's squared 
and then you could conjugate. I mean, you could conjugate, and then then you get six. Fifth root, no, you wouldn't. No, that'd be a mess. You just probably leave it like that, because then you'd have to do the fifth root, and that would be time the third. Yeah, that'd be a mess. So I'd just probably leave it like that. But I don't really care about these getting. I don't care about that. Learn the chain rule. The chain rule out of the four rules is probably the most important. The chain rule is detrimental. So I want y'all to kind of focus on 5.4 and 5.7. If you look at the top of your page right here, what does it say? 3.4 and 3.7. Did it say, did I say anything about 3.5 and 3.6? Yes or no? I haven't said anything about it. If I haven't said anything about it, that means you don't need to be worrying about it right now. Capiche? All Capiche. right, I'm going to cut off this and I'm going to cut off the recorder. Everyone is responsible.